Welcome to another All Israel News update. I'm Hanan Lushinsky. And today we're going to talk about the drama that we went through uh, the last two or three days uh, regarding the hostage deal. Uh, Hamas uh, first being reported to be close to an agreement, then saying uh, they agreed. Israel saying it's a trap. Uh, they didn't agree to what we approved. Uh, now Israel captured uh, the border crossing in the Ga from the Gaza Strip uh, to Egypt in Rafah. So a lot of reports the last few days. Let's look at them one by one and uh, give an overall picture of what's happening uh, right now. So the first thing was uh, last Saturday, uh, All Israel News and other media uh, in Israel reported that Hamas is close to accept accepting. Uh, people were talking about a breakthrough uh, in the negotiations and Hamas was only supposed to send, an send another delegation to Egypt, uh, to Cairo, to basically finalize the last few details before uh, basically saying we reached an agreement and hostage deal uh, and a ceasefire to go along with it. So uh, this report in the evening of Saturday um, caused large demonstrations in Israel, thousands of people going out on the street and calling on the government to finalize the deal, uh, telling especially Prime Minister Netanyahu, let's go, let's agree to this deal. Um, some even saying whatever it may be, whatever the cost, we need a deal to get the hostages out of Gaza before it's too late. So then, as we said, the delegation went to uh, Cairo. They were supposed to finalize some of the agreements. CIA director uh, Bill Barnes, uh, the American CIA director, uh, joined the negotiations, which were thought to be in the last stage before agreement, when on Sunday uh, reports came out saying, basically, um, the negotiations are close to the breakdown. So what had happened uh, in the few hours since then? Uh, the Hamas delegation, as we said, went to Cairo, but they didn't agree uh, on the finalizing of the, of the uh, deal. Hamas basically didn't concede the demands that they had from the beginning, which is an end to the war. On the Israeli side, Israel has maintained throughout, uh, the, the government of Prime Minister Netanyahu has said all the time, we are not going to agree to an end of the, uh, of the war in any deal. Uh, we're not going to stop the war. Hamas must be destroyed. So that's where we were on Sunday afternoon, Sunday uh, evening, basically going from Saturday uh, saying we're close to a deal to on Sunday we're close to a breakdown and uh, the IDF uh, was preparing to go into Rafah. Uh, just remember that Rafah is the last major stronghold Hamas has in the Gaza Strip. Israel has said that this war won't end until we go into Rafah and uh, defeat the Hamas battalions who are still there. And then the bombshell announcement on Monday, all of a sudden Hamas says, hey, yes, we agreed to a deal. Um, Israel was reportedly caught by complete surprise by this, by this announcement because Israel, remember, hasn't conceded to anything. They still maintained that uh, the war wouldn't end and, and some of the other uh, demands that they had maintained all along. So Hamas all of a sudden announced, hey, we're going to agree um, without at first saying what they had agreed to, uh, what the deal was that they had signed on to. So Israeli officials immediately said, this is a trap. This is a ploy um, intended to, to keep us from going into Rafah. And uh, a few hours later, and, and uh, even today, reports came out that Israel uh, received then the, the deal outline, the proposal by Hamas. Uh, with all the details that they had agreed to. And Israel says, this is something we haven't even agreed to. Why was this transferred to Hamas, given to Hamas to sign by the mediators? The mediators are Qatar and Egypt in this case. So today reports came out explaining basically that from the Israeli side, this deal that Hamas says they're agreed to wasn't ever offered by Israel. This, uh, it, it includes, uh, again, these positions that I, I outlined earlier, that Israel would uh, uh, said that they would never agree to. Um, so what seems to have happened, again, those are uh, reports and it's, uh, w we should take all of these with a grain of salt. But what seems to have happened is that uh, the US, the Biden administration, gave some guarantees, basically saying under the table, you know, behind the scenes, uh, if Hamas agrees to this proposal, will uh, on our side we will um, basically tell Israel to end the war in some capacity which then allowed uh, Qatar and Egypt to give Hamas a proposal 
that they then agreed to. This proposal wasn't ever agreed to or approved by Israel. Hamas only approved it because, uh, because of the US administration saying we're gonna guarantee our side, the Israeli side of the deal. And uh, now today Israel says uh, we're, we feel like we were tricked, we were blindsided by the US and by Qatar and Egypt uh, for this deal. Okay, so now we saw that Hamas uh, agreed to this deal, a deal that Israel hasn't approved. Um, let's just take a step back and look at who we have uh, here, who we're dealing with, uh, basically. Hamas says they're gonna, they, they signed this deal, they're gonna guarantee this deal, but remember that Hamas, uh, the leaders of Hamas, in almost all of the cases are people with blood on their hands, they're murderers, so even if uh, they're saying that they're agreeing to a deal, Israel can't trust this, uh, putting, putting aside the, the issue we just mentioned, that Israel was blindsided by this deal. So even, even in Israel today, people are saying it, it doesn't matter or let's go with the flow. Uh, w the only thing that matters is getting the hostages out, which is absolutely understandable. But I think we should remember who we're dealing with. Uh, Hamas leader in Gaza, Yahya Sinwar, is uh, somebody who with his own hands murdered several Palestinians actually and not Israelis, that's why he was in prison. And all of these people are absolutely un untrustworthy in what they're saying. And many of the reports today are basically, especially in the international media, are saying Hamas agreed to a deal, let's go with it, uh, while not, not reminding the audiences and the readers who these people are, and basically uh, putting them on the same pedestal as, as Netanyahu. Uh, there were some uh, in the international media, some, some stories basically saying, oh, the biggest obstacles we have to, uh, to a hostage deal and to a ceasefire are Sinwar and uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, as if you could put these two people on the same level. Now, since uh, all of this mess uh, happened, all of these reports flying back and forth, rumors, what happened on the ground? Uh, Israel yesterday evening said that even, even though they were uh, studying this new offer by Hamas, they're uh, um, basically saying this isn't an answer to an offer we gave. It's a new offer. We're going to look into it. It's a couple of written pages in Arabic. Uh, so they're going to go through it, sift through it. But on the ground, uh, Israel today in the morning announced that the IDF captured the Rafah border crossing. Now this border crossing is the last remaining lifeline Hamas had to outside, uh, to the outside world, basically. It's a border crossing between Egypt and the Gaza Strip. It's uh, three and a half kilometers, two miles from the Israeli border. So overnight, the IDF uh, basically raided into the Gaza Strip, captured this border crossing, and now controls all of the entry points into Gaza and uh, basically can shut down this, this uh, border crossing and entry point, which served Hamas. The IDF said that the area served Hamas for uh, terrorist attacks. Just last Sunday, Hamas shot rockets from there at another border crossing with Israel, killing four uh, soldiers. But the main point with this border crossing is the underground tunnels that run under it uh, between Egypt and Gaza and where Hamas continued to get ammunition, get uh, equipment, and this is uh, the main focus for the IDF to shut down in the coming months. And the IDF already announced that they found three underground shafts in the area. So this is probably going to be the main work uh, in the coming weeks. It's important to note that the IDF is calling this a limited operation. So this isn't the large scale operation that Israel has threatened to carry out in uh, Rafah. This, is, this might be the first step. It's a preparation for capturing uh, the whole area. But as of uh, right now, it's just two brigades. It's a very limited operation. And there were also reports suggesting that the US, even though it continues to, um, to say that, it w it, that Israel shouldn't uh, carry out the, the uh, larger scale Rafah incursion, that the US told Israel a smaller uh, operation would be fine with them just to add uh, to the pressure on Hamas to get a hostage deal uh, worked out. So, as we said, all of this has put another, uh, even more strain on the relations between Israel and the U.S. Uh, there were reports today, we also wrote about it in All Israel News, that uh, 
Again, as we said, that Israel felt played by the U.S., that this added to the tensions. And also reports came out uh, yesterday in the U.S., today in Israel, that uh, the Biden administration put a stop and uh, delayed arms sales that were already approved. They were already um, officially, uh, they told the Congress, basically the Biden administration has to notify the Congress uh, when they're doing arms sales. Uh, the Congress was notified months ago, and now the Biden administration has put them on a hold um, in what looks like another way to pressure Israel not to go into Rafah and to accept the hostage deal. So all of this connects together. Um, I hope we could make this a, a bit more clear. I, I hope you have a clearer picture of what's going on right now. Uh, let us know down in the comments uh, what you think. Um, if you like this video, subscribe to our channel and all the other social media channels we have on All Israel News.